everyone, and welcome to episode 16th of the May Contain Action Podcast. I am Paul. I am Paul. I also go Why by... Why do you say it like that? Ex- yeah. Excuse me, I'm doing an ongoing thing. Just yeah, let him get there. Thank you. I'm also known as Action Jackson. It's my alter ego. It's my name. I'm joined, as always, 99% of the time by the one and only current and former future retired wiffle ball champion yeah <laughs> trevor may soon to be soon to, soon to be, see you yeah soon to be yeah hasn't happened yet also, but we're we're optimistic here on the podcast also it's episode 19 i know that's confusing here in the in the it's in episode the welcome to episode 19 yeah. but we had to, <laughs> of the may contain <laughs> but we had to push this several times for you know baby stuff and baby stuff <laughs> Both yeah, times. basically just my children are the reason. <laughs> um, and you may be wondering, who's that jolly, joyful giggle in the background? It feels warm, yet familiar, yet also like my father. <laughs> because he is all of our daddies. It is Darkness429 is joining us here today. Hey. Tim's here! <laughs> Welcome, Timothy! Hey, Welcome hey. back! Thanks, Paul. Thank you. It's the second yes. time you've been on the pod. It was different last time, but you... this. You're you're our, you're our first. Uh, Jen was our first repeat. You're our second repeat. Uh, don't don't say that, please, God. Oh, you're our first. Never repeat. hear the end of it. <laughs> you're first. Jen doesn't count. She's never hasn't been on the pod oh, yet. No. Very exciting. Can't wait to. Have, we should have Jen on the pod. I've just been thinking about yeah, it. Yeah, I don't know how we haven't done that yet. We should have her on. Yeah. One, one of these days we'll figure it out. He likes movies. Thank right? Thanks for yeah. thanks for having me. Yeah, it's great. Oh, to have you. so great to have you. Uh, well, this is typically where we go over. So, oh, we can't do. We're not doing obsessed today. No obsessed today, though. We no have a lot of things. <sighs> the next, the next time we do it, it'll be a big thing. But yeah, we we don't want to take yeah. extra time. We'll just, we'll just, uh, we'll talk movie, movie. Which, what are we obsessed with though? I do, we... So we we do a little bonus, uh, a little bonus uh, show oh. uh, sometimes twenty to thirty minutes at the beginning of the show where we talk about our favorite. Uh, things that we're obs- like the things we're obsessed with right now when it comes to because I you know I buy I buy gadgets all the time. Or mm. uh, new games we're playing, or like a, a show we started watching. Like everyone brings something in, and we just kind of obsess about it for a little bit. And it's a good time, but we didn't prep yeah. for that. And um, I, I have a list of like fifty-eight things at this point, so okay. uh, it right, needs fair. a long episode, and we won't put you through that. Um, and we also no. didn't prepare you for it, though. I'm sure you could hang. You, you know, you oh. got stuff you lack too. <laughs> sure, but, I mean, like, uh, yeah, I mean, like, as, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you want to quickly touch on something cool as a check-in, we can do that mini version. Do a little hey, check. What are you up to? Your, your show. Go for it. Paul, do you have Is something? It? Do you have? You sound like you have something. I mean, kind of, but not really. I don't know. Maybe it's controversial. I don't know you if I want to really bring excited it. Excited about if it? If it's controversial, it's content. Talk about. That's it. That's true. <laughs> controversial is content. Uh, I just recently, so I, I don't want to go into like a whole thing, uh-huh. but I have uh, a dog. His name is Obi. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. He's a lovely little boy. Uh, he is a golden doodle, a mini golden doodle. And he is a joy. Uh, so uh, he is also a little dog who has full of, is full of energy and is a little shit sometimes. But that's okay because all dogs, in some way, little shits. Like I found a little bit of throw up on the on the on the rug today, and I was like, you know what? I didn't anticipate cleaning that up today, but I'm happy I have a dog. <laughs> <laughs> <Where'd he go? laughs> that wasn't on the list. I'm, Add it. Where I'm right. going with this. The going with this is that. Uh, I recently actually just started to like, I was like, I'm going to take his training seriously because it's gotten out of hand. Like, it's not that he's like a a poorly trained dog. He's actually uh, very good at recall, sit, stay, all that kind of stuff. He's very good at it. But little things he's kind of like pushed the limit on. He's like, oh, I think I can maybe jump on some people. I think maybe Uh, I'll jump, you know, get up up on some small kids shoulders and push them down the park. Not my favorite thing. Uh, So we're going to kind of go through training again. And I got him a collar. Nice. And I'm not going to be, uh, I know some people get like a little concerned about like shocking the dog and like that. Nothing like that's going to happen. It's just going to be a little uh, beep sound and mm-hmm. at worst a vibration. But it's just going to be a little thing I'm excited to kind of like, because I can't always get to him, you know what I mean, fast yep. enough. Like, yeah, you know what I mean? Right. Um, so I got the collar. I'm excited about it. It's, uh, it's the easy educator is what it's called. A little nice. gadget. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to like re-getting him trained and like, Getting us both on the same page, so he's happy and knows what to expect, and I'm happy and know what to expect. So that's my thing. That's my check-in. Yeah, As someone who who uses an e-collar on his dog, like, yeah, they're fantastic. Boom. 
There you go. Yeah. Good to know I'm not alone. They just need to know. They need to, something needs to happen when they do something. It doesn't necessarily have to be painful. It just has to be mm-hmm. like, you just know. a little reminder. Yeah, it's like yeah, we, have, we have our ghost vibrates for our phone. We're like, did we forget our phone? We'll never forget our phone anywhere. Oh We're checking gosh. our pocket every three seconds. It's the same thing. We're just trying to do that to dogs. Wow. <laughs> Didn't think of it like that ever, but that's a good point. Yeah, right, that's it's kind of the same premise. Uh, yeah, that's kind of the same premise. Um, yeah. Well, that's that sounds fun. Uh, don't have a dog, though. <laughs> Kate and I spoke about it today. We're like, dog might happen uh, in the next bit, too, because we have a nice big backyard, and I, I want to be nice. forced to go on walks a little bit more because I, I need to walk and go places because I'm <laughs> fat as shit. Uh, <laughs> that's neither here nor there. I'm... I'm I have a I have a diet I'm going to be doing here in a week or so, but we'll talk about that next pod because ooh, uh, I'm, oh, not, but I, I'm oh. not prepped to talk. Well, oh, okay, I, fair. L- okay, I'll I'll just unveil it. This is what I'm yes. obsessed with. Um, <laughs> and I I I'm like I am not motivated to do a di- like a do a workout program, but I I dieting's fine, but it's about convenience, right? It's always mm-hmm, about sure. convenience, and I yeah, I'm like let's hack into into what I need to do here. So let's make this a whole project because of course. I don't know if you guys noticed, I make lots of YouTube videos now. And so you I'm do. like, hey, let's yeah. turn this into one of those. So there you go. Content. So uh, I'm doing, uh, I, picked a, I picked a workout program, I picked a diet. I'm doing MegaFit. Uh, MegaFit is like, it's like for powerlifters. It's literally the most basic food there is. Everything's macros and whatever. And I, I have no problem. I eat like that. I do not care. I did that during when I played. I, I'm not fancy when it comes to food. Like if you give me chicken breast, rice, and broccoli, Hell yeah, mm-hmm. brother. I could eat that. Yeah. All, my wife cannot. Oh. She hates that. And I, as long as it tastes oh, okay yeah. and it's not, doesn't taste disgusting, I can just, I can eat for fuel, not eat for fun. I'm, I can do that most of the time, even if it's just microwaved. But interesting. Okay. The workout I'm doing yeah. is Hugh, Hugh Jackman's workout he tried, did to get, become Wolverine. So I'm going to be doing that. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh okay. Nice. Okay. For a, right. for a month. So I'm going to do a month of that Jeez. while I'm eating the, uh, so I'm going to go super strict super, and just see what change, how my body, because I'm telling you guys, I am, I weighed in at 265 pounds the other day and almost threw up. I was like, what? Wow. That's the yeah. heaviest I've ever been by a lot, by about 15 mm. pounds. So I was like, yeah, I, what I'm seeing is and mm. what I'm feeling is real. Hey, you're enjoying being retired, bud. I, I you're did. Really... I did. Re- I did enjoy that up until up until now. Um, and hey. like, <laughs> now you, found, you found that limit. So now I can yeah. use YouTube. To, I, I haven't. I ordered the food. The food's on the way. Uh, we're doing. I'm gonna do this. Like I got this little measuring thing to measure. Like I'm just gonna do all the measurements once a week. We're gonna do like a weigh in. Like it's MMA. Nice. Okay. And all right. Up, and just see what happens. I don't know. Um, and it's gonna be one of those YouTube videos, you know, that you see. And I'm gonna put. I love that. I'm, I'm excited to screen. see what. Green yeah, screen dude. to play, which oh, I got, yeah. which you can see in the camera. If anybody is watching this on YouTube, you'll be able to see it. I got this green screen. It has not been put away. I've been using it for everything. So um, mm. that's probably my fun, fun gadget I've been using. I, I just, I, I got the Elgato one, the one that collapses and then oh back yeah, out. oh yep, that's the best one to get. I think it's very convenient. Mm-hmm. Uh, though the biggest one it is is six foot six tall, and I'm six foot five, so I actually have to put it on boxes. So I can stand in front of it. <laughs> it's the biggest one there is. <laughs> That's tall guy problems. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, so, yeah, I don't fit out in front of the green screen either. I got to get a big sheet. I think if I want to do anything out of this, outside the outside this tiny box or this actually very big box, I just don't fit in it. So, um, yeah, that's what I've been up to. Uh, Tim. Damn. Hey. What you hey. got going on, man? You always you always got cool stuff in the You always got cool stuff in the uh, background of your camera. You always got cool stuff you're doing. What are you up to? Uh a lot of magic. I think really like that's the thing I'm obsessed mm. with right now that I've been just really just having a lot of fun with is magic. So the Fallout decks just came out Ooh. and uh, oh, I fell yeah. in love with the Wise Moth, man. This is very, very fun. So uh, one of my things that I've really come to enjoy doing is building decks. So uh, a lot of it's out of all the bulk that I have here at the house. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, been been just just tinkering. Uh, playing Tinkering. around. You know, uh, you know, we got like St. Jude Play Life coming up and I know mm-hmm. like a lot of people will be playing magic then. We got GCX, I, I, like people are like, yeah, I'm gonna yeah. be, I'm gonna be playing this deck against you. I'm like, oh crap, I've gotta bring my A game. So, yeah. like, I'm already like juicing up some other decks. So, I'm excited. It's, it just like that's been my thing. It's just a lot of magic. I love yeah. it. It's my happy place. I love how magic has just become like a a staple. Mm. I mean, it kind of has Dude. been, but like for a yeah. lot more people, it's it's like like a lot of people play magic. And yeah, I didn't right, think that right. I would be this addicted to like a card game. Like I knew, like I collected like Pokemon cards, but like they were fun for me because of the show. 
and Yu-Gi-Oh cards yes. are the same thing. It was like, oh, it's like I'm playing Yu-Gi-Oh, like I use the TV show. So like it played into like the whole like pretend and imagination. Um, mm-hmm. but like I never learned how to actually play the, yeah, the yeah. actual card games. So correct. It fe- it feels yeah. like I am like I'm catching up on all the years that I missed out on. You can also that's be that's so a good way to put it. Yeah, that's cool. I kind of so feel like too. now. Oh yeah. All the different mechanics of the decks and stuff. It's like different. Oh every time. yeah, that's awesome. Yes. And you get to, and you, you get to fall in love with certain things, which is really and you get to explore and learn like. Like what, what kind of player am I? Like, what does that say about like me as like a person? It's like it really like because it's like, people are like really put themselves in their decks. Like it's it's kind of crazy like how in, intertwined that all is. It's also really cool for me. Also, just starting to play Magic because you guys got me into it. Yeah, it's like I didn't realize the type of like card type I'm drawn to, or I guess the uh, what would we call like commander style. I guess it's yeah. I'm commander still style. very green, but um, oh, like like overall like mechanics. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Like big fan of the like control the graveyards, bring back dead things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I love that style. That's yeah, like so right I'm, up my alley. I'm a big mon- I'm I'm big stompy monster guy. So like that's yes, like, you are. That, that is my thing. So like my dragons, my dinos, my Eldrazi's. Um, like the Mothman, I'm playing out of the out of the graveyard with this guy. So like yeah. it's a little different for me. Like I have to I have to <laughs> actually had to critique myself and like figure out how to play differently. It's it's wild. Yeah. It's really cool. I also learned that. Uh, those that don't know, play against Tim. He's a he's a politic and son of a bitch. So <laughs> yeah, because I got I learned real quick playing with the people that we play with that you have to politic your butt off, or oh, it's not going to end well for oh, yeah. you. I, I like one time recently, the last time we played together, yeah. I was like, ah, chat. Should I kill Tim? Like he's he's gonna be a little <laughs> mad. Like I'm not gonna kill Tim. That's <laughs> why so I didn't kill Tim, and then he killed me. Of course, next turn. <laughs> When you have the this chance, you gotta, you, gotta, you gotta stab him in the heart, man. Like you just play with uh, Jen, and then you'll you, at least you won't take last. <laughs> yeah. She just won't yeah. attack. She just she like, won't attack. She doesn't because because also her deck is like also kind of a, a a nuke deck too. So if she attacks, she's gonna hit you so fucking hard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and she doesn't want to hit you so hard. Very scary. She doesn't want to do it. Yeah. I, one thing that's <sighs> interesting to me because it comes in the the Lord of the Rings deck, which is the only one I have, but uh, the 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 Shire. Playing the like the food deck and just like oh, yeah. buffing uh-huh. your little characters, uh, mm-hmm. it's it's obviously very hard and you have to get more lucky. But like you can if you can stack and you are playing against somebody who can't wipe decks very fast, you can mm-hmm. you can just overwhelm them. Like I yes. played a lot of Hearthstone, so like a lot of these strategies are the same. Hearthstone yeah, is a much simpler it's game. Similar, um, but like it's a Murloc deck is what that was. Oh, I don't even yeah. know if that's a real thing anymore, but. Uh, that was how you oh. just buffed one one Murlocs him to ten tens, and they just you just couldn't get them off oh, the yeah. goddamn deck if you didn't have the stuff. Uh, so I, I love the game too. I, as soon as I you like talk started, about magic all day, uh, yeah, oh, I could yeah, do, yeah. Soon, I, yeah. That's the type of stuff I love doing. Like when I played League of Legends, I used to bi- do builds for my characters in weird ways all the time because that was fun. Still, it, it yeah. got the game got boring, and then I'd be like, oh, how can I like mix stuff up and use this hybrid item to mm-hmm. be good or whatever. And uh, people hated me for that because uh, everyone hates everyone in League of Legends. So that's not the game to do that. I would not recommend uh, just showing up in game. Day. Oh, by the way, guys, I'm playing this character that you know is a support completely differently, and I'm not going to support you. See ya. They they don't like that. They don't like it very much. Um, all right. Well, that was a wow. I, I now I want to play Magic. Thank you. Uh, but uh, yeah, let's uh, let's get people caught up. Let's hop right into this this uh, movie so we don't have to. So want to keep you all let's day because we can get talking about movies. For Forever too, because we like talking. Um, one thing, though, oh, yeah, on behalf of Paul and I, we would like to to apologize. It's taking this long, but we are so excited that you chose Back to the Future. Darkness chose yeah. Back to the Future, and we are so excited to watch this movie. But Darkness, I need you to do one thing for us, because in the uh, uh, outline here, we have we we go through some funny letterbox reviews that I've. I uh, I don't mean to take all the credit, but I find these. Uh, yeah, and uh, uh, you can like you check in. The, it's like the top three loved it, and the top three uh, hated it, and just what people yep. are saying about the movie. And usually, people are pretty funny. And so, we like to give our guests the uh, the honor of uh, reading these out loud. Sure. <clears throat> all right. So, uh, Pat. Review. So, uh, can I say the name of the individual? You want to just read the review? Sure. Yeah, you can read right. the name. Of the Perfect. Movie. This is from Patrick Williams. Uh, when they all shout shit and then get shit dumped on them. That's cinema. Five out of five. Perfect. <laughs> I like that one. Very, very. That's unanimous. a five star like. review, by the way. Yeah. yeah. So uh, this is from Matt Lynch. So structurally perfect that it may have eventually ruined movies. 
four stars. Confusing. Four stars. Four I don't, Matt. Uh, uh, this one's from okay. Carrie. Uh, she gave it five stars. Uh, this review may contain spoilers. Uh, if Marty McFly was my son, I consider incest too. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of. There's a lot. There was a lot of those. That was the. Uh, that was the, probably the most tame. Um, and also, this review may contain spoilers about me. <laughs> okay, <laughs> this one. This one's so good. All right, this one's from your mother's GP. Uh, it's a half star. It says, terrible Rick and Morty spinoff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Morty. Morty. Uh, <laughs> oh, boy, it's Rick. A, oh. It's, a, it's about your kid, Morty. Oh, no. <laughs> uh. Good. Uh, this one's from uh, De- uh, Denver Skate, half star. Uh, th- uh, this is a good movie if you're a loser who likes bad movies. <laughs> and the cursor's there in the old uh, <laughs> screenshot, like usual. Uh, <laughs> the cursor's in the screenshot. Awesome. Oh, uh, and this uh, last, re- <laughs> last, last review from, from Ben. He gave it a half a star and just goes, ass. <laughs> he didn't like it. He didn't like it. Didn't like it. Uh, So the movie is Back to the Future, uh, directed by Robert Zemeckis and produced. It was uh, uh, produced by Steven Spielberg. Spielberg, very obvious. Lee, uh, it made three hundred eighty-one million dollars worldwide, but only cost nineteen million. Or for those people at home who need that to be converted into a a little bit easier to understand number, that is uh, nineteen percent of an Emperor's New Groove. Um, <laughs> uh, we have a running joke. Emperor's New Groove was a hundred million dollars to make, which bi- baffles us. Uh, <laughs> That's wild, but it's a nice round number. So basically, was it, the, can, it is. So I have to, I have to ask: Was it a hundred million dollars to produce because of the cast? Was it because of the animation style? Was it the technology that made it cost so much? Like, really, what what no. what was worth a hundred million dollars? We think it was the animation because that that was like one of the last movies they did where they had to draw draw every. Right. Well, yeah. it was the animation, but they had to redo the entire movie. Oh, yeah, they, they and they had to redo it, movies. so they made the movie twice. Yeah, that's... that. Wow. that I didn't twice. know that. Yeah. Yeah. They made it like... Wow. Uh, they, uh, it was like a Moulin Rouge... St- not Moulin Rouge. Uh, Moulin-style uh, movie, and they had it in front of test audiences. They hated it. It was like a more serious kind of movie. Wow. So oh, no, no. It was, yeah, it was like thing. more like a Moulin-type movie, but it was the yeah. same, like... It was like Inca... You know, Aztec uh, inspired. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, tone oh I would have. I yeah. wouldn't have liked that. No, mm-hmm. no, no. It, it needed to be no, super, to super uh, funny. And dude, Walburton and whatever they they crushed it. Like David Spade <laughs> and Walburton hilarious. were perfect. So it's like it just worked out. Uh, <laughs> but wild. <laughs> but like a hundred million dollars. <laughs> Can you imagine? Um, oh it actually gosh. won an Oscar. Did not. Oh no, no. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, back to the Future won an Oscar. Sorry, we're back on Back to the Future. I was like, yeah. are we talking about <laughs> Ember's Groove? Uh, won one Oscar for Best Sound Effects uh, Editing, which, duh, there's great That's sound effects. Solid, yeah. um, mm-hmm. Best Motion Picture won the Golden Globe. Did not know that. Musical wow. or comedy. Um, and then won, got a couple BAFTA nominations. We got Michael J. Fox, and Marty McFly, Christopher Lloyd, the famous Christopher Lloyd, the perfect Dr. Emmett, Doc Brown, uh, Leah Thompson's Lorraine, Crispin Glover's George McFly, how he didn't win an Oscar, no one knows. Um, and then Thomas F. Wilson just disappeared off the face of the planet as a bit. Uh, <laughs> it, was, it was, uh, so those, those are the, uh, those are the old stats. So when we hop into this, um, I cannot wait to, uh, get your opinion on these things. So the first category that we do every single, uh, show Tim, is to guess Rotten Tomatoes, IMDb and the letterbox score given to, okay. it. um, I have the numbers here in front of me. Um, if you would like to go first or we can just. If you want to think about it for a second, give it to Paul. I don't know. You weren't supposed to look these up. Hopefully you didn't. I haven't looked at them. Good. Um, so for Rotten Tomatoes, what do you got for Rotten oh, Tomatoes? What do you think? Geez. I don't know, uh, man. Maybe like a s- s- seven? So it's out a of 100. Seven? Sorry. Rotten Tomatoes is out of 100. <laughs> IMDb is out oh, of 10. Oh, out of 100. Yeah, oh, I thought no, this yeah, was sorry. one yeah, out of 10. Yeah, no. Oh, uh, so IMDb then like, is. Yeah. Okay. So Rotten Tomato is, is 1 to 100. Yes? Yes. yes 100%. 100%. 70%. Okay. 70. Okay. Round. Uh, IMDb is out of 10. I will give that IMDb. I will give it a six. Ooh. Okay. And then letterbox is out, is out of five. five. I know this is very. I don't. I don't think I've ever looked at a letterbox review. So uh, you should. Two and a half. Two and a half. You technically just read 
all those reviews were letterbox reviews in the beginning. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to go back and... All right, it's basically just social media for movies. So if you like oh, movies, interesting. it's it's yeah, it's actually really fun. Like, dude, there's some hilarious okay. takes people have. It's really funny. I, I just scrolled it the other day. I was like, oh my god, this is the funniest thing I've ever done. So that's why it's in this now. <laughs> uh, Paul! Rotten yeah. Tomatoes, okay. what do you got? Rotten Tomatoes, I'm going to give this bad boy a 76. Okay. IMDb, I'm going to go with a 6.2. And letterbox, I'm gonna give a three point one. Sheesh! Yeah. So you guys, I need you to know that this these movies, this movie is universally beloved. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> Rotten Tomatoes is a ninety three from critics, ninety four <laughs> from what? audience. IMDb really? is an eight point five. It's like in the top hundred ever. And Letterbox wow. is a four point two, which is insanely high for Letterbox. What so, the? F- so I'm really surprised. I always thought it was just like an outlier. Like, like it was more of like a yeah. like a cult classic y type movie. That's no. how that's how I've always felt about Back to the Future. I didn't realize it was that like publicly accepted. Yeah, it was huge. I mean, it made four hundred million dollars. Nice. Wow. Okay. I, I'm I apologize. Right. I didn't yeah. know. So that yeah, um, people loved it. Evidently, we only kind of like it. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, oh no! If I, you want my actual personal reviews, oh, like, oh, we're gonna get your review at the end. Oh yeah, <sighs> okay, all right. Vivian Ward. So uh, I know I wrote something in the thing, but Vivian Ward is Pretty Woman. Uh, her walking down the street at the beginning of Pretty Woman is like universally recognized as like an iconic opening to a movie because you're like, okay, I know exactly what this is about. Sure, and mm-hmm. she just she's just killing it, right? Uh, so like we go from one to Vivian, like how good does is this opening? Like how much does it jazz you up, or or oh. like or like invoke something? How good was the opening, just in general? How'd you feel about it? Like uh, we like Lord of the Rings, we gave a Vivian like the uh, fellowship because of the music came on that was through the whole series and yeah. all kind of stuff. It just set it up really well. Um, yeah. What did you? How do you feel about the opening to this movie? Uh, I it's. Like, I know exactly what's happening when you hear the, the clock sticking. Like, I can pick yeah. that out of anything. But mm-hmm. it's, not, it's not until uh, uh, Huey Lewis comes on with The Power of Love. Like, that's when it, like, yeah. really is, like, that's the song that I'm like, oh, Back to the Future. Like, you could, like, as soon as that comes on, I'm like, I love this song. It's Back to the Future. Like, like when he's going to school, right? With the, like, as soon as, yeah. as soon as he yeah. goes, like, Doc, are you mean to tell me it's 825? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know, yeah. I'm late for school. You know, like that. <laughs> that's really good. Oh. Yeah. Um, like, yeah. and that's the part where it kicks it. But like the, the, the ticking and like them, like talking about the, um, the Libyans and like all that stuff. Like mm-hmm. that, that is, if you have watched this movie, like uh, over and over, you know, Yeah. but I, I think like the, like the iconic part is when he comes out of the driveway, he grabs onto the truck, power mm-hmm. of love kicks on like, yeah. It's very iconic. I think it's. I think it holds. I don't. I wouldn't put it up with Pretty Woman, but no. like, it holds up. Yeah. I okay. still think it still holds up pretty well. Yeah, it's up there. Like yeah, I, so scale of one to Vivian. What do you? What do you? What do you? Like, like uh, I don't know. Like it's like a seven. Yeah. Okay. Feels good. Like, that's fair. I feel like I feel like that song. Like that yeah. is like it, like everybody knows like Power of Love. Like oh yeah. Oh, absolutely. Or like Back in Time. Um, I agree with you. I agree with you. I feel like. It's tough because that part you're talking about that's so iconic is like is like what everyone thinks of as the opening scene. It's like I 10 minutes that, in. I, yeah, I think a lot of people forget about the actual opening scene of like uh, uh, just the clocks ticking. And then I can't remember the name of those machines, but like a very complex machine that does a very simple task. <laughs> it opens like just like the dog can. Just Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 I remember the, you, d- the dog food splatting. Yeah, vivid. it opens up like a sequel. Because it's like you're supposed to already know yeah. that, like, oh, Doc hasn't been around for a while, and all this. Because like you just watch it, and you're like, why the frick is there so much dog food? And you don't Happening. make that connection until like way later. Like, I want. I, I think they do that because they want you to go back and watch it again. I. <laughs> you go back in time. Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> and you know, asking questions right out the gate is probably a good way to get people to watch the whole movie. You know. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's true. Um, I would give this, as far as an opening scene, a six, just because I feel like I don't necessarily include the, um, like, I'm late for school part in it, because it almost feels like a second scene, which I think mm-hmm. is fair. It's just like a second scene. The first part, though, is just, I don't know what's happening. Like, if you're the first time ever watching it, you're like, I, 
Libyans. I don't know why that matters. There's dog food. There's a lot of it. It's very gross. I don't really know what's going on. So it's kind of, I mean, six even feels like generous to me. That's yeah, my I'll, score. I'll be honest. I forgot they even talked about the Libyans in that point. And then yeah. I watch, and then I watch it again. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, why are they talking about Libyans? And then the Libyans came out of nowhere later. And I'm like, oh, yeah. The yep. Libyans. Libyans wearing their <laughs> Libyan garb in their, in their car, presumably from <laughs> yeah. Libya. I think they drove just here the from Libya. Uh, <laughs> they just drove straight onto a container truck, stayed there, or tr- container ship, stayed there for six months, got off of it. Now they're here. Uh, yeah. That's We'll get into that in a moment. Um, but yeah, I gave it a five. It's the same thing. It was like, it, but again, it's like, our, it's almost like if this were SNL, right? The mm-hmm. opening would be the cold open. And then the part where Huey Lewis is playing is like the monologue. Right. So like they're yeah. both at the beginning and we're, mm-hmm. it's the beginning, but you know, where's the begin start and end. So, but I agree. I think that the, uh, the iconic scene of him, like grabbing the truck on the skateboard, like him skateboarding is, you know, yes, just linked to this, this movie. So as soon as you get that, it kind of sets the tone. And then from there on, it's just, it's just good old fashioned. fun. Agreed. Mm-hmm. Good old fashioned fun. Um, the ends attack Isengard award for best scenes. Cause you know, I named that because I love when the ends get pissed off. Tree beard wants to run and he's gets pissed at Saruman and then she attacks. And I, I'm just thinking about right now and the hair on the back of my neck is raising. Um, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> for this movie, I mean, it doesn't need to be a battle, obviously, uh, favorite scenes. Um, I got a couple, uh, I, I will start if you guys don't mind. Yeah, um, yeah, go for uh, it. Like the points that I remember the most um, that I just are, are the iconic similarly to the beginning for, for you, Tim, uh, parts for me. Um, the guitar solo at school towards the end when he just goes oh, nuts yeah. and shows them how to. Though when the guy's like, hey, listen to this and just like puts the phone out, I'm like, he can't hear anything, man. Like he, <laughs> he can't hear what he's, what's happening. Like no matter how much he's shredding, he's got no You know idea. that new sound you're looking for? Especially in 19, what was it, 1956? Like, yeah. Like, like that was totally distorted. <laughs> can, yeah. Can, can, yeah. Yeah, and like. like Sounds let's, good. Let's just, let, you know, let's, let's, you know, we don't need, to, we don't need uh, Marty McFly to invent rock and roll either. Like, let's, let's just have him tread. We don't need to have the part where someone discovers him and then he invents an entire genre of music. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Which uh, you know, I lo- I loved it though. I loved how he got into it, and it was it was great. Um, uh, the the when he returns, when he when he when he comes back, this is my favorite scene by far, and okay. it's for a reason. You probably don't really. I, I need you guys to go. I wanted to get a clip of this to show it to you, and I forgot, so I got to still send it to you. There is a point when he comes back and he's in front of the mall again, and he's like, "Oh, I'm here right before the event's gonna happen. Like I can mm-hmm. save Doc." <laughs> and he's at the top, and he sees the Libyans driving in, and he's trying to get Doc's attention, but he can't, so he chose to run down the hill, and he just falls down the hill. Just you know what I'm talking hill. about? Yeah. Uh-huh. That moment, I, I watched it four times, I'm like, what the hell was that? Like, they threw him off. Like, he, he jumped off and rolled. So, <laughs> he just rolled. So that whole moment got me. But then when he comes around, and then Doc goes down, he's like, Doc, Doc. And then he's like, oh, I ended up opening the letter. I remember as a kid being like, oh, my God, thank God. <laughs> oh my god i could not handle him dying again you know uh so yeah. that that's probably my favorite but like when it starts with him cock and then just it like, cuts really far off, far off and then a stunt man just takes a header uh into some bushes oh god it was so funny i think it'd be more dramatic if you fall here marty i think uh it's better. They're like, hey give us like, a nice little controlled fall okay and he's just like Do it! And it just... <laughs> banana peel <laughs> oh my god uh, okay no, that's good. That's good. I, I have to piggyback off that. Yeah, I agree that the end part is really good. Uh, or the singing at, at the enchantment under the sea dance. Um, but I really like actually when the original band is up there and they're singing. Actually, yeah, it's after he like cuts his hand, but they're singing Earth Angel, I think. Earth Angel. I yeah. love that freaking yeah. song, dude. I love it so much. Um, so I love that one. And then I also love when he goes... Back to the future uh, with Doc and like they're up on the clock tower and Doc's reaction to when he like yanks, he's up on top of the clock tower and connects the thing (laughs) and then like it pops out down below and he's like, oh, (laughs) 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 I freaking love it. I love that scene Uh, so, but I think that's actually informed a part of my personality. I think I scream like that. I think I legit internalized it. That's how I scream. Lloyd, man, he's a, oh my gosh, he's a treasure. Those are my treasure. two favorite scenes of the whole of the, I, I look forward to those scenes like watching. Like, oh, I can't wait till that happens. 
<laughs> those are those are my two. Also, when he's hanging up there, he's just ha- he's hanging on with one hand. This guy is like 80 a boss. years old. And I'm like, this guy's got the upper body strength of a like <laughs> also it came unplugged so easily, but it's holding his entire body weight. So I'm just like, yeah. ah. <laughs> I don't know, man. Should have got more uh more cables. Yeah. Didn't really plan very well here. Uh so good. But great scene. Um all right. So I think for me, it, it, like Johnny B. Good is most definitely like the, I think everybody loves that. So I, mm-hmm. I have to say Johnny B. Good is definitely like a, the best scene out of all of them. Mm-hmm. Um, the other scene that I really like, it's it's I guess it's twofold. I love I love the 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 beginning scene of the interaction with Biff and um, Marty's dad, and then at the beginning, mm-hmm. and then flipping that at the end to see like what happens after the fact. Yeah. Um, oh. when, when when the light when lives yeah. have changed and the timeline yeah. has completely spinned off into this this new reality. Yeah. Um, I I really like that. I just I really like that transition to see like how the bad guy became like he was just he just got pooped on and now he's just <laughs> like you know like like, like neutered the McFly's won like it was re- it just it's really cool so I I love that come up. That's cool. Come up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Uh, I. Uh, I agree with that. It was very. Now that I'm an older person, yeah. Uh, when I, you're a kid, you're like, yeah, f that guy, like, <laughs> like yeah, shit on. But then I'm also like, uh-huh. but like, how, like everyone's lives are different. Like I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't know how I feel about that. But yeah, as a kid, you're like, oh, any and and also in that same scene, like unexpectedly, inexplicably gets the truck he wanted. Like, yeah, yeah right it's just in the, the exact same truck everything was, was yeah. exactly the same yeah nothing else changed just his life that's it just his life uh like his brother's like oh i always wear a suit i'm like oh cool they're rich they got they're rich <laughs> yeah. now they're rich because he punched him nice <laughs> uh, he's confident now. it's so much deeper than that trevor <laughs> no it, oh. it, but it's funny because my wife said this is just you know this is just uh uh the the, the woke le- I'm like, it was in, made in the 90s, okay? <laughs> They're like, well, why you got to flip it where you're just like, all right, Biff, don't be an idiot. Like, you know, why can't you just, I'm like, because. Because it wasn't like that, and now it is. It changed, and it's great, and yeah. I love it. And then <laughs> I said, good guys win. And then I looked her in the eyes and said, fuck Biff. And then she was like, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because seriously, though, Biff is, to this day, he uh... is by far my least favorite villain. He's an I, iconic villain. Oh, yeah. he's iconic. He's such <laughs> yeah. a douche. Uh, yes. And uh, I didn't know, like, it, the the whole the whole him getting punched at the end part. Like, I'm like, oh, this is this is a uh, this is a reference to sexual assault. Uh, oh, I really wanted him to get punched, and then he did, and it felt just much, much, much better. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. But Crispin Glover, man, we'll get into him in a moment because we're about to talk about favorite characters. Uh, Timmy, you start us off, Tim. Like, wh- who, are oh, your, who are your favorite I mean, characters? Chris, yeah. uh, like, I, I love Doc Brown. Like, like, oh, there's on. just, yeah, he's I, there's just yeah, no right. way around it. Like, just like Doc Brown is just, he's just iconic. Like, he's just, he's a fan. Like, he really is. Like, when you really like that comment, that was like, this is a Rick and Morty ripoff. Like, like he is like family fun, Rick. You know, he's mm, he's Rick yep. without the alcoholism, and I love that. I think it's fantastic. I think that's why I love Rick and Morty so much. Oh, of course. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think that's it's the latent uh, 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 reason everyone loves that. And then, so al- and then also, um, uh, Goldie Mayor Goldie Wilson, because I don't love him, I don't love him as the mayor, but I love him when he's working in the diner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I will be the mayor. I love. That. I will be the mayor. <laughs> mayor, and I'm gonna Goldie sweep Wilson. up this town. You know, it's just like, and, and it's and it's another one of those things where it didn't age well. Yeah. Um, it was just like it's a little too far, Classic. but I really love the come up of Goldie Wilson. I think that's like, another thing where he's like, I'm gonna do this thing, I'm gonna go to school, I'm taking night classes, and I'm gonna be, I'm gonna run this town, I'm gonna be the guy. And I love that for him. So I think that's like, if I had to pick two of them, it was mm-hmm. Doc Brown and and uh, Goldie Wilson. I like it, I like that. That's awesome. Okay, uh, okay, this is tough because. Obviously, it's Doc Brown, but you can't you can't just say Doc Brown every single time. Uh, favorite actors or, or characters is actually going to be um, what's his name? Uh, uh, Marty's dad. I, I'm blanking on his George. name. George. George. Thank you. Uh, George McFly, for a couple reasons. One, because apparently everyone hated that actor. On, really? On set. Yeah. Everyone, oh. everyone, everyone did not like him because he overacted so hard. So when you were like, I can't believe this guy didn't win an Oscar. I'm like, I, I can't think I can. 
believe it. Uh, he would want to do stuff and they they would have to do so many reshoots because they were like, stop doing that thing. You're doing a oh, thing no. and we want you to stop doing it. And he's like, this is how I see the character. And they're like, knock it off. Um, so knowing that with the hindsight and then watching him act, he's just so much. He's just like, I don't think I could take that kind of rejection. Like, no one does that. No one moves You're their arms like that. Density. Yeah. <laughs> my density. He's also yeah, like. He's like the Joker. Yeah. A little, he's, he's a little creepy. Yes. He's very like, and I'm like, no person really acts like that. So it's just more fun to watch him on, on screen. And then also, he's not a bad looking guy. Well, like, what? Because he has his hair slicked back. Suddenly he's like hideous or like a nerd or like, I don't know. It's like that well, weird, like yeah. the attractive guy is also somehow like no one talks to him, I guess. I, yeah, he I was kind of socially inept. He's like, he didn't really know what was going on. He sold that. He sold that. Yeah, hard. right. Uh, so George McFly is my favorite character to watch in all, other than Doc. Obviously, Marty is actually a little bit. A little bit of a whiny bitch. So I'm not a huge. <laughs> yeah. Marty McFly fan. <laughs> of a bitch so uh but i like george george is fun what about george. you trevor george oh. uh well we all like doc because i just love christopher lord of um course. uh shout out to einstein for being just the bestest dog ever um <laughs> he, Bryce einstein he literally sent you back in time dude and then you came back and you're just chilling and uh honestly that dog the dog they actually had play einstein which i didn't actually i looked for its name i couldn't find it might have been named uh -huh. einstein uh uh, I've seen lots of interviews about working with animals on like main characters and animals on movies and how it's a nightmare. And this really? dog, this dog looked like it did exactly everything they wanted. This it dog like good, it just like dog. Sat, sat there for the most part, just yeah. sat there for the most part. And then they're like, Hey, come over here. And he's like, okay. And then he just did. And it was over. And I was like, this dog's probably awesome. And I love dogs. Um, and then I would say, uh, uh, well, last one. Yeah, again, I'm not with you, Marty. It's funny. We're literally n we never like the main character, pretty much ever. Yeah, um, almost ever. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I uh, got one of Biff's little friend, the 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 short friend with the glasses. I don't even know if they say his name. <laughs> He's got uh, that annoying laugh. <laughs> yes, that guy. Yeah, and that's the only thing he does. I'm like, I like that oh, guy. Oh yeah, I want I, I wanted to punch him, <laughs> I but like, like that guy. <laughs> I noticed him, and so <laughs> he gets points. <clears throat> Isn't he one of the guys that like? Calls the black guys a slur. Does he call them like probably yeah? <laughs> yes, <Yeah. laughs> sure. And you know what? Happens? We don't want to mess with no reefer addict or anything. Right? And then yeah, you know what happens? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the reefer addict. The and, reefer then, addict. <laughs> and then they get their ass kicked. Oh no! <laughs> yeah. Also, Pass that Coca Cola that definitely has cocaine in it, but I don't want to be no reefer addict. <laughs> Yeah, you're gonna your high school oh kids are gonna gosh. knock shit to these grown ass mm. men, and there's like <laughs> twice as many of them as uh, dude. What are you doing? Yeah, uh, I really you... they did. There was a lot of like questionable <laughs> stuff, but it always automatically like immediately had consequences though. So I think that's like yeah, you know, like that's the point. That's true. You gotta kind of have people do be shitty things so that shitty people need to be shitty sometimes in a movie so that they can get their what's yeah. coming to them. And that's the story. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I love when they all got out of the car at once. That was great. Like, they all heard yeah. him. Yeah. We were like, great. Yeah. <laughs> that was great. That was my ends attacking Isengard. That's what that was. <laughs> uh, that was so oh, oh, they're so time. relaxed when they do it, too. Oh, because they got the reef. That's why the hotboxing in there. <laughs> they were hotboxing in that car. They definitely, they, they did yeah. that up, too. Like, it just... Oh yeah, <laughs> just just really like comes out. <laughs> Sup? Yeah, yeah. So They're freaking strong. Uh, oh, and la real last one, another uh, Jenny. She was uh, I had a crush on her. So Jenny, uh, his girlfriend, Jennifer. Oh yeah, oh. yeah, Jennifer. Ooh. Yes. Okay, which which version of Jennifer though? We're talking about. Ooh. Are we talking about Back to the Future One Jennifer? Are we talking yeah. about Back to the Future Two Three Jennifer? Because Back to the Future Two Three Jennifer is the same girlfriend. Uh, to uh, Peter or uh, Daniel Larusso in the Karate Kid, and she's also the um, the CEO in um, uh, the Boys. She's the one that uh, that uh, feeds. Oh um, no, way you're right. Yeah, it is her. Yeah, yeah, it's oh, her. Shoot. Yeah, so so yeah, so that's always fun. Whenever oh, whenever like you go and watch Back to the Future Two, and they redo that scene. <laughs> Of Jennifer walking in at the end, and like uh, I forget what she says to Marty. I have to watch it again. I don't even yeah, remember so, what happened. Yeah, so it's yeah. So Back to the Future Two, it picks up right at the end of Back to the Future One, 
when Jennifer walks up the driveway and and Marty opens up the garage door oh. and the black truck's sitting there. And then Doc comes and he's like, it's about your kids. Um, <laughs> it's about <laughs> your kids, Marty. <laughs> Um, and then I think of the family guy skit every, every time. Every dude, I always time. Think that. It's your daughter. <laughs> what did she say? Like <laughs> he goes, he goes, he goes. It's about your daughter. She's married to a black guy, and they, they both go. We're okay with that. Like that's that's fine. Why aren't you okay with that, Doc? And they just like they start moving away from him, and he's just like, oh, oh I mean, uh, and like every time. I just, just <laughs> every time. So we're actually, uh, we're actually okay with that. Yeah, uh, we're actually fine with that, yeah, Doc. You what's know? wrong with you? <laughs> oh my gosh! Every time uh, I forgot about that. Anyways, yeah. So if you want, like, just fun, fun Back to the Future trivia, go go watch the end of Back to the Future One, and then watch the beginning of Back to the Future Two. And Jennifer changes actresses. Yeah, I forgot the reason. There's a whole thing about it. Oh, um, sure. But yeah, and like, I, I grew up loving Karate Kid. Karate Kid is another just like movie that I just love. Um, and she's she's in that. And then when I and then I saw her on the boys, I'm like, oh no, my childhood. <laughs> so yeah, came full, came full circle. Uh, the it. boys got me with when when maybe became a, a bad guy. Uh, I from Arrested Development. Uh, oh, I sure. mm. I was like, oh, I don't like this at all. Um, okay, awesome. I love those. Sorry. Those are great. Uh, but now we got to get into quotes because I, I know that there's lots of quotes. I don't want to take them all, but I only have one. Okay, so okay. I'm gonna go yeah, first one more one. time. Uh, and I, I just, I gotta, I gotta say it. Um, roads, where we're going, we don't need roads. <laughs> 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 Flips the shades down. <laughs> what, what, what were they going? They're going to like 2015. Yeah, they're going to 2015. Yeah, hate to break it to you, uh, Doc. <laughs> dude. But if you really, like, you really think about it, like in 1987 or whenever they made that movie, like Got them it. thinking about 2015, like oh yeah, yeah. it's wild. We to, always like, have real rose colored glasses for the future. Like I'm sure we'll be better. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, yeah, no, you're, no, no, not a chance. You're driving a Honda Accord, sir. Yeah. If you want to watch, if you want to see something that's really creepy. Go watch um uh, uh what's the Danger Will Robinson uh what's the the movie oh. um uh, Lost in Space yes watch Lost the 1996 version or 1997 version of Lost in Space and they go to like 2020 something mm -hmm. and it's like like everything is like Star Trek you know it's like the uh, bad guys look like they're the Borg and it's like everything's in space and like they've and they've messed up the, the planet and they have to go find a new a new Earth to inhabit. Um, you, if you if you've watched Lost in Space, you know this, right? That but anyways, part's real. It's it's crazy yeah. to see like what they <laughs> thought the future was gonna look like, even in like that short amount of time of what was considered like sci-fi. Um, oh yeah, we haven't progressed at all, and it's honestly kind of sad, dude. My of not to get you off track. 100%. My favorite quote of like that whole like the, it's the future is from the Transformers movie, the animated one from the eighties. Uh -huh. When the and the narrator's like the year is 2012 or something like that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's or like the, well, oh no, he says the year is 2005, and I'm like, uh. <laughs> if you look at if you look at technology <laughs> progression from like the 40s, like like look at World War II, right? Yeah, and then look at where we were in the 80s. Like we had computers, we knew of like microchips, like we had mm -hmm. all of these things. So we we just assumed that it was going to exponentially curve on the, pro uh, of the progression of technology. And it was more like exponential and then flatline. Like we kind of like, and it's like had like small baby steps, but yeah, I mean like you could totally understand why the producers for back to the future two are like flying cars. Of course we'd be flying cars. Why wouldn't there be holograms? You know, like yeah. all of these things, like it totally makes sense. Yeah, exactly. yeah it's weird. It, it depends on the way you look at that too, because it's, it's hilarious. People who are like in the science side of things would say oh we are exponentially growing in terms of technology there but in terms of consumer products oh, right yeah, exactly it, like be able to make we, your cars fly yeah, and all yeah. that like stuff stuff like that like the, we hit some roadblocks we had no idea we're gonna exist uh mm -hmm. uh <laughs> that that are in in the way um but what about quotes guys <laughs> 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 what are your favorite Sorry. quotes do me a derail uh, my bad. uh I, I have mine if you i, I can go i'll go yeah i go with mine uh so my one is actually like a whole little scene, but Ooh. my favorite part is just because it, it has nostalgia attached to it. But my favorite line is Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan, <laughs> the actor, the actor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who's his vice president? Jerry Lewis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so good. 
So that something about that always makes me laugh. Like it just again, it's freaking Doc's response. Like it's just his inflection. It's everything about his character. It's just so funny. And <laughs> when then, he opens the door, he's got the he's got the freaking yeah. mind reading yeah. machine. He's like back Shh, on his head. Yeah. Don't don't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work. Come, come in. <laughs> Do you know what this means? <laughs> it means it doesn't work. <laughs> So I love, I do love that scene, but the Ronald Reagan part always gets me. Uh, but then at the very end, for some reason, like his like a nostalgia is when Marty McFly is like getting exasperated. And he's like, uh, "You came up with the flux capacitor, which is what makes time travel possible." <laughs> and like he like turns around, and then Doc whips open the door, <laughs> and his eyes are all huge. For, it, so it's that physical comedy. <laughs> but then it's also the fact that I remember every single time I watch this movie, and it might be because my dad recorded it on VHS from the television. There's always a commercial at the end of that scene. Yep. Every no. time. There's always it always fades to like a black. It's like on TNT next week. And then it goes through. <laughs> but um yeah, anyway, that's my favorite quote. Oh my god. Who the hell's John F. Kennedy? You know, it's like <laughs> yeah, that yeah. entire the entire thing. <laughs> <laughs> so so good. Jerry Lewis. Jane Wyman is the first lady. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Uh, I, I think like that entire part is great because my one of my favorite lines is uh, he goes, "What the hell's a gigawatt?" Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, that was that was really really good. Uh, God, there's just there's so many and just like gigawatt. really like quote, quotable lines. Uh, what was the other one that if I my that calculations I really are correct? Once you get to 88 miles an hour, you're going to see some shit. You see some <laughs> shit. Yeah, you're see some shit. <laughs> I never uh, caught that as a kid because, again, I think my dad recorded it from TV. So I never actually saw like a theatrical version. You're going to see some muted. serious stuff. The, yeah, exactly. um, <laughs> some guys think stuff. The other, the other like really fun line is when Marty uh, visits his dad as Darth Vader. Yes. Um, he's like, I am Darth Vader. I've come from the planet Vulcan. You know, <laughs> that entire thing where he just like mixes up a bunch of sci-fi and tries to sell it to his dad. Yes. Oh, uh, that was that was really good. I like I like that part too. Uh, planet Vulcan. Stupid. I remember hearing that and thinking, "There's some so many pissed off people right now." <laughs> <laughs> Literally, the point they got you. They did. They uh, got me. What about uh? How about some recasting recasts? Um, I didn't. We don't have to do all of them. I have a couple. Um, but I have some. You have some. He Paul's got some. Uh, this I is like some. my favorite. This is my category. I, I never I have love some. This. Uh, okay. And just you know, you can pick any actor from any period. Uh, honestly, we I we used to be like from the same period, but like. And every movie was from the 90s. We're like, who the hell was acting in the 90s? So yeah, exactly. <laughs> so then we just like started anyone we liked or whatever. So perfect. Okay. Uh, uh, Marty McFly. I have yeah. okay Dave Franco. Sure. Huh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. I can see that he can mm -hmm. pull it off, right? And then for mm -hmm. Doc, just because I got a little bit of crazy scientist a little bit, but this was tough for me. I thought I think Christoph Walsh would do a good job. Really? Yeah. We he, dude, Christoph Walsh is always in our recast because well, he's a great actor. But uh, <laughs> when he is in Inglorious Bastards and he does the. Uh, that's a bingo. Like he does like weird, you know, you remember that line? Yes, mm -hmm. I do remember that. Yeah. Yeah. When he does the laugh and like goes into it, like he could play crazy person pretty well. He can't do yes. it as good as, I mean, nobody's Christopher Lloyd, right? No, but no. Uh, Christoph Walsh, I think like, I don't know. It's some, someone that I adjacent to play those roles. But like, if anyone's like, Hey, could play a mad scientist. I can't think of anyone who's even close <laughs> to Lloyd. All you said you had uh, some just those two. two? Oh wow! Yeah, I just have two. Man. I mean, like Paul showed mom, up. dad. I kind of just like want to let him lie. Hey, mm, here, that's fair. All right, I'm gonna go through these kind of quick. All right, Martin McFly, Tom Holland. Oh man! Easy recast. Get shit. Yes. Out of no, but because you're right, because he's he's the perfect <laughs> yeah, high schooler. <laughs> yeah. He's just the perfect high schooler, and would totally crush it. Could you imagine him just jamming out a Johnny Be Good in that yeah. like in that tweed suit? Oh my god! Come yeah. on! And he can do acrobatics and stuff like sliding across the. Yeah, yeah he can. He can, he's do, he can do everything they need him doing in the movie. Yeah. Oh my god, he's perfect. Friggin' Tom yeah, Holland. I'm, I'm pissed. Though. All right, you ready for the next? Yeah, Doc shoot. Emmett Brown. Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> oh, oh, Come on. Yeah. oh, that's so good. He'd be yes. hilarious. Oh, he I would love be some funny. Jeff Goldblum. I think it'd be funny. 
He not he, again. He's no doc. <laughs> According to my calculations, uh, calculations. Yeah. <laughs> it'd be, very, it'd be great. See some serious shit. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, yeah. Lorraine, uh-huh. uh huh. I'd have or uh, uh, Marty's mom, Emma Stone. Oh, Ooh, so I like oh she do a good job of that too. Yeah, I suppose she'd be good at that. Uh, George McFly, a little tough, but I'm gonna say either Michael Sarah or Jesse Eisenberg. So the same person. Uh, yeah. So basically, yeah. One of yeah, those two. Yeah, Sarah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they could do that. I don't know if they could do Chris McClough. I don't think anyone could do that. But uh, no. no. We don't actually. But do we want that? You know what I mean? True. Yeah. 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 Awkward. Yeah, Sarah yes. Would do a good job. I think so. And then for, for Biff, a uh, little tough on Biff because it kind of falls off. I go from strong to like a little bit weaker here. But I'm thinking like a young, like very young Dave Bautista. I yeah. think that'd be kind of that'd be fun. Mm. He's done. Watch him be like stupid and mean and all that. It's yeah, it's hard to pick someone who's like a dumb Just, but also mean, like not dumb and dear. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like Dave could be mean and dumb. I think so. Yeah. But yeah. Anyway. It's part of those first two though. Mm. Part of those first two. John That's Cena play Biff. John Cena, I like him too much. Too jacked to play, Biff. way too big, yeah, very way, very large. Like Dave yeah. Bautista is pushing it already. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. huge person. Anyway, do, do you have any Tim? Um, okay, so I had to pivot real quick for someone else, <laughs> but I also had someone else in mind. So Taron Egerton, Ooh. Um, oh, I think Marty. I think he would yeah. he, he could be really fun as Marty. Um, I, I think he, he, he portrays a younger like individual very, very well. Like he yeah. was great in, he was great in Kingsman. He does, he is English. Uh, at least so I think Holland. he's English. Is he, well, Tom Holland does a great job. I yeah, mean, like I have never, I, I don't yeah. know if I've, ta- I've, I've ever heard Taron without an accent. So uh, he does play, know. he plays someone who, who has American accent. I think he does a pretty good job. Mm-hmm. Oh, he, he, and Tetris. Tetris, oh, he's an American accent. Yeah. Okay. It's good. And he does a good job. Oh. Um, Doc Brown. Uh, this one might be a little a little weird, but I think it'd be really funny because like I can see I can see it in my head. I can mm-hmm. like imagine this person taking on the role Paul Giamatti as Doc Brown. Oh, I think it'd be yeah. really funny. Uh, just for some too. reason, I just I think he could nail it. He'd um, be he, really good. He's got like he's got like this like this fire to him that's always really fun. I've always enjoyed Paul Giamatti in, in like shows and, and in movies. So like I think that could yeah. work out Have really well. Have you seen well. Holdovers? No. He's Watch excellent. it. This is his best movie. Yeah, he's great. I mean, he got. The the what best actor nomination for that? Yeah, one of my favorite Paul Giamatti um, like pieces of content was um, was Madison. Um, Madison. He's, he's he's James Madison. Oh okay. Yeah. Oh. Uh, and okay. so it's like, so like I, I like American history. So like but that was that was like he did that. It was very well done. Um. Anyways. Um. So like this was like I was kind of like just like looking around to see like who could be like a good uh, like other replacements. The only other person I could think of if we were to do cast change if we were to change. Uh, Marty's mom to Bryce Dallas Howard, like that's the only other person that okay, could be like damn, she could probably son. she could probably crush it. As, yeah, mm. as Lorraine, because like you could definitely I could definitely see like an old like a, an old Bryce Dallas Howard. Yeah. Um, yeah. but also like Bryce Dallas Howard from like Jurassic Park or from other movies that she's done. Yeah, like, and she damn. also has kind of like a like a a fifties vibe. Like she, she does right. It's the, well. it's the ha- it's the hair. Yeah, yeah. it's there in the yeah. fifties. And so, like, I think she could be she could be a great Lorraine, that's a and that's that's it. What a babe! Yeah. Nice. nice. Those babe. were good. Yeah, oh, that might have been our yeah. strongest. I was you weakest made, by far. You made me pivot real quick. <laughs> you crushed it. Holy oh. shit! Love that we okay. both pick redheads though for Lorraine. That was that's oh, great. Mm. Yeah, that's funny. Love we have head. a type. All right. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Who would I want it's... my super hot mom to be? <laughs> who would i want to kiss me as a young version of her uh oh, remember hot. that happened in this movie guys uh it actually was way i so i had forgot how much how big of a part of the story that was I was like oh this is like the whole time mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. oh i don't like this Ooh. yeah it's very uncomfortable uh also who why are you at dinner uh, anyway uh it, jason or or a Kind of the similarly to the recasting, uh, we like to talk about who peaked because some people did this movie and then disappeared off the face of the planet. Biff, 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 <laughs> Biff. Uh, and then some people like this was on their way up. Uh, yeah. I would say 
honestly though there was this might have been the peak for several um though mm-hmm. michael j fox made other v- movies in this series after this ser- what what else was my- he in after this oh boy he was in um, shows teen wolf before this he was teen wolf before but i don't nothing was as big as back to the future i think i think he started doing the animated oh, stuff yeah, i think he, he was start, he started doing he started voicing and I and I wonder if it was because of his um is probably. it Parkinson's? Yeah. It probably uh, started And started. I think the Parkinson's started to play into a lot of why he wasn't doing any like visual stuff and why he voiced a lot of things because he was in Atlantis. He was Stuart yeah. Little. Apparently I didn't even know they did oh. three Stuart Littles. Uh what? there are three Stuart Littles. Really? Um, it must yeah. be really good. Wow. So he, okay. he also just has like that iconic voice, right? Yes, he does. Um, but I mean, that, he did some st- he did TV some things for a bit too. He, yeah, the Michael J. Fox show. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. I for, even forgot that was a thing. Um, so he did, he did a couple things. Spin City. I remember that. I remember my mom watching a oh, lot Spin of Spin City. City. Oh, well, wow. that was in that was in '96, oh, yeah. and that had that had a, that is a, a decent cast, right? Yeah, no, that was oh. that was a pretty popular show for a while. I yeah, think Charlie Deep. Sheen was in that. Yeah, and Heather, Heather something. Heather that went on from '96 to 2002. Oh wow. Six years yeah. is a long time for a show to go. That's a okay. long time. So it's probably between that and this. Uh, but then again, there's the three movies. He was just the star. I'd say this is his peak. Uh, like, what about? Yeah. What are we thinking, Crispin Glover? <laughs> what else? Is, Who? Because he Crispin Glover's in other things. Can't name That's anything. Uh, Crispin Glover is George. But, Fl- I mean, I. No, this is his peak. Hundred percent. This is his peak. Yeah. Uh, this is his peak. Uh, I, I even on the list I have Biff because I don't even have the guy's real name. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, this is it. Like yeah, yeah, and there's no one really that I'm like, oh yeah, this is like I remember that person. Like even the person who plays uh, Jennifer in the first one, Claudia Wells. Like I don't know her from anything. Apparently she was in a few things, hmm. but like not nothing big. Like she was like just like small things. Um, yeah, I can't really think of anybody. Yeah, oh, well, uh, Jennifer, she was also, like, a model at the time, too. So she oh, was like, interesting, okay. Yeah, she was, like, known in pop culture a lot more. That's why she didn't have a ton of lines. I don't think she's a, she was an actress yet, really. Um, what about what about uh, uh, Christopher Lloyd? Because he's got some stuff. Like he, he's in Taxi. He's in Who oh. Framed Roger Rabbit. He's in One Flew Over oh, the Cuckoo's my Nest. God, he was great in Who Frames Roger Rabbit. He, he's, but was that his best stuff, though? He, hey, you know? but he's Uncle Fester. In the Adams family, bro. Oh, he yeah, is. true. He is Uncle yeah. Fester, yeah. And that's probably least... what I know. I, I always remember him from that. Like, I'm mm-hmm. like, but that was even before. So this was even honestly, this is the end because all of these movies, all these movies he was in were before that. But he was towards the end of his his uh yeah. his career there. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. He's not a young man. I, 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 it definitely looks like he kind of just like rode on the success of Back to the Future and kind of just like dabbled here and there. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, and then he also had some other. He also, yeah, he also had like those big things, like Who Frames Ro- Roger Rabbit was like. I mean, he he's the judge. Yeah, he he's in a lot of that movie. Um, and then and then he does. He just yeah, he just kind of just sprinkled in. Yeah, but that's the thing. He's not like he's known as Doc Brown. Like yeah, I yeah. Think it's that is too. the association. Yeah, uh, I think that's fair. You know, I, that's as much as I love him and his character and, and his acting, that's him. Yeah, that's, that's iconic. It. You know what I mean? Uh, what about Leah Thompson? Are we even going to talk about Leah Thompson? We gonna... Oh, we got to talk about Leah Thompson too. I mean, honestly, I'm blanking. But Leah Thompson. Yeah. Uh, she, she, she. What was she in? Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you. She peaked. Okay. Peaked. What she? What else was she in? Uh, Howard the Duck. Nope. Um, a year later. The cartoon. <laughs> All the right moves. Yeah, the cartoon. All the right moves. Um, Dennis the Menace. Apparently. Ah! Oh, the live action one? Live action. Was That's she the mess. mom? I don't know. Let's see. She was, what year was Alice Mitchell, whoever that character was. Dennis That's Mitchell. Yeah, time. I think that was the mom. Yeah, that was the mom. Oh, no shit. That's cool. Yeah. Let's see. Little Rascals. She was in, she was in Little Rascals. It was Little Rascals in 1994. Who was she in Little Rascals? Beverly Hillbillies. I think she's and, a mom uh, on that too. Uh, she's another mom. She wasn't the main character. It doesn't look like. No, she was in that. Yeah, but so, like, so she but peaked. Still, she yeah. peaked. So pretty much everyone peaked in this movie. She was in this movie with Nicolas Cage called Left Behind that has a three point one rating on IMDb. <laughs> really? Ooh. Yep. 
Yeah, yikes. Yeah, her, a Nick her, Cage her, movie I've never heard of. That's not good. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, she was in Jaws 3D. So. Ooh. Yeah. Wait, hold on. So did they, did they remake Jaws for 3D, or is I it a brand so. new movie that was like... I think it's Jaws... It says Jaws 3 slash D hmm. in 1983. So it's actually before uh, Back to the Future. Interesting. Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. Peak. yeah. Everyone yeah. peaked, dude. Everyone peaked. Everyone I think peaked that's to this I movie. think that's fair. Yeah. I think that's, that's fair so to say. Sad. Yeah, well, at least we got... The, at least they got this. You know, some people don't have peaks at all. So... True. Uh, good for them. All right. What about the final rating, guys? What would you give it out of 10? Uh, upon rewatch, how are you feeling about it? Tim, lead us off here. This is your movie. I want to know. Yeah, what, this. I mean, like this. This movie for me is like a nine out of ten. Like I just like <laughs> like this is my comfort movie. Yeah, like comfort movie. like this is the movie that when I'm traveling, like I'm probably playing it to go to sleep. Like oh, it is oh, just wow. like it is. It has been this movie that has been like the like just something that I always go back to, and I've been watching this movie since I was a kid. Um, I I know this movie by heart. Like I, it's just it's just one of those movies that just I just absolutely love. So yeah, it's like. I'm not going to give it a perfect 10 because like going back and watching, I'm like, oh, they didn't age well or mm, yeah. they probably could have done that differently. Um, but just because of just like how iconic it is, um, I grew up, my, my mom would take us to Universal Studios. And okay. so like going on like the Back oh. to the Future ride, mm-hmm. um, you know, like was also like big for me. Like that was really cool because it was like one of those rides that I could directly associate with a movie that I really enjoyed. Um, like I didn't grow up watching Jaws. Like the Jaws ride, like wasn't fun for me. Like no. the King Kong, the King Kong ride originally, like that was like I never watched the like, King Kong. So like I, I knew the big, like the big gorilla that was like terrorizing New York City, but that was mm-hmm. it. Um, but Back to the Future for me was like that one movie that was like super special for that. So nice. A lot of it's nostalgia. That's yeah. really what it comes down yeah. to. I mean, that's valid. That's part of it. Like that's why we like yep. movies. That's like, why we're doing no this. No movie thing. is perfectly mm-hmm. made. Maybe Dune 2. But everything else... I still yeah. haven't seen it yet. I am so uh, excited to watch do it. it. My gosh. Do it somewhere oh, loud. Oh, it's so freaking good. Yeah, um, loud. Do, you, do you mind, Trevor, if I go? Go for it. Yeah. All right. It all. I think it's uh, I'm going to say my, 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 um, my score, my nostalgia score, thinking about this movie, is probably, yeah, 9 out of 10. Um, even as a kid, this movie was so iconic, so cool. Everything about it was amazing, from the skateboarding to the sneakers he wore, uh, the life vest. He was a sailor that he wore. <laughs> um, the music. I mean, I didn't want Johnny Be Good to stop. I actually get a little bit annoyed when he kind of goes on his guitar solo because I'm like, bro, you were killing it. Let's keep the song going. Like, this <laughs> yeah. is so fun. Um, everything about it is just so iconic. Leah Thompson couldn't be hornier in this movie. I yeah, mean, just an. God. I mean, my goodness oh um, fair on my hope chest like <laughs> just absolute so i creepy. mean she is at a dinner table with her family and just she's just groping this boy she's, she just she's, mad. she's yeah, we're about to have Fisher wedding crashers all and of wedding sudden. crashers yeah just under the table just <laughs> holy so shirts and pants <laughs> <laughs> he can stay on. in my room yeah. like <laughs> she's just don't she's forget it's his mom <laughs> she doesn't care yeah but she says it in front of her parents like what the heck yeah you're I supposed know. to be like oh my super god chat. this is this is the age of i love lucy beds and she's just like you can come up with me <laughs> <laughs> look at the look at the bang um so just, just like everything about it so iconic um so it's a nine to ten but on rewatch Knowing what I know now, and I actually recommend this to Tim because I know you love this movie so much. I don't know if you have seen it, but on Netflix, they have a, a series called the Movies That Made Us. Mm-hmm. Season two, they have a Back to the Future episode. Uh, it's about an hour long, and it goes into the behind the scenes and making of the movie. It is fascinating. Oh, cool. It's so cool. Like, they basically shot most of the movie. They almost did Emperor's New Groove, and then they recast the main <laughs> character uh, into Michael J. Fox. They had a completely different guy. Oh, like I didn't that, know that. For a oh, lot yeah. of the movie. Yeah. Wow. And they recast him. Uh, Michael J. Fox actually went from filming Family Ties in the day and then would come shoot this movie at night. Um, Holy crap. And it was all on one set. Like, even the chase scene. Sorry, I'm getting a little too into it. Even the chase scene. Oh, I love this. With, like, uh, um, when Biff is chasing him in the car and he's got the yeah, skateboard yeah, yeah. and whatever. Uh-huh. They just go in a big circle. And it, like, yeah, yeah, it's just, it, a, around it's just left square. turns. Yeah. yeah, because that's how big the set is. Like, that's it. That's all, that, all they can do. Um, so that's watching crazy. that is just, it's fascinating, but, uh, I still love the movie. I think it's fantastic. And so 
yeah, I can't remember what I just said if I did give it a second score, but it's probably like it's still high. It's like an eight out of ten. Yeah. It barely no. dropped. I'm sitting at eight point five because the same thing happened. Like, you know, I remember nine. Uh I just the Spiel Spielbergian, like we've and we did the Goonies already on the sh- on the. Oh, okay. Yeah. So like, I lo- I love the Goonies growing up, but that was mm-hmm. whole. I think I just have a huge crush on Sean Aston now. He's like my that's favorite. That's fair. Uh, yes. And so the Goonies was my family's version. So that's yeah. the movie we would always rewatch. Uh, my my sit- brothers and sisters are like my brothers the closest to me in age. He's six years older. So like they're just uh, what they liked is what I liked. Uh, yeah. Even though I was mm-hmm. six when that movie came out. Um, they were all like fifteen. It was like awesome for them. Uh, and they loved Corey Feldman for some reason because uh, he's really funny. Um, yeah. All right. Hey, before I, I, I let you guys go, we take off here. I want to hit a couple of Easter eggs because Paul hit them. Uh, there's one that's actually good. And then one is, I don't know why that's on the list. Uh, it's stupid. Uh, so first one, the, the Twins Pine Mall becomes the Lone Pine Mall after my yes. first trip. That's cool because he actually knocks over the, one of the two pines, which I had to look for. I was like, oh, yeah, he does. My yeah. pine, yeah, my pine. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh yeah, I forgot about this. This is you awesome. And then my pine, like that. De- those like little details like that just make movies incredible, and they're so easy to do. People need mm-hmm. to do that more. Yeah. Um. Cause so I feel like stuff's so on the nose lately. Uh. But the last one on this list is Doc Brown's dog Einstein is named after Albert Einstein, reflecting Doc's scientific interest. No shit. <laughs> No, <laughs> no shit. shit, internet. Like you give me all this cool stuff, and then this dumb, dumbass one at the bottom. Good job, <laughs> Chad GPT. Wow, you, you figured it out, guys. You yeah. figured it out. Wow. No, this was actually a list. Like someone, uh, maybe someone. It was a blog post, but someone probably actually used Chad GPT to write it. So you're probably right. Um, because I've tried to stay away from that, at least for these lists. Because <laughs> sometimes they say stuff. I that's like not this true. one that that is a, a poster of Marty's room hints at his aspirations and foreshadows his adventures. So I would I wonder if they have all three of them there or because like it's also really interesting too if you watch the second movie and at the end of the second movie they actually tease the third movie they shot two and three like at the same time Uh, Um, uh, but it's weird though because one they don't do that they don't tease the second movie at the end of the first one um and so i thought that was really interesting so i wonder if like the west if there's like a western poster like in his room maybe to like foreshadow oh, epi- like the third movie yeah um so that's really really interesting because like i feel i, I wasn't sure I, i've always wondered did they know this movie was going to be a hit before they made it probably not. or or because of the time difference and like they all get older but they go into t- they they lord of the rings it with two and three mm-hmm. to keep it to keep it consistent but there's a decent chunk of time you can tell like michael j fox definitely looks older than he did at yeah. the end of one with the beginning of two sure um so like I, that's, I, that's a very interesting easter egg now i'm gonna have to go back and look at marty's room i i highly doubt they knew before um it just wasn't something they counted on um, yeah that like especially for three movies maybe you're but they did the, the, it was a very ambiguous end. like that could have been anything right that the that they could be going anywhere and anything could be happening in the future uh mm-hmm. and it, they could be going there for any reason and that's that was they left it super open ended for that reason, but uh, they were like, "Let's see how this does." And you know, mm-hmm. it's it's but it's it's Spielberg's name. It's like presented by Steven Spielberg, so mm-hmm. like they knew they were gonna. It was gonna people were gonna give it a shot, right? Yeah. So and it was it, it freaking crushed it, man. They they, I love I love how much I, it's so interesting to find out all the ways that Spielberg was in like involved with so many of the movies that he didn't direct. He was just kind of like hanging out and yeah, it was or it was like one of his friends was directing it and he just like helped a little bit and you can mm-hmm. see his little touches and i just like it's it's in de- it's iconic to our uh our childhoods his his touch and so oh yeah I, I always love his his movies even his recent ones i, I still i even like super eight man I, I like all his movies anyway that concludes episode what is it paul what episode is it 619 it's 19 episode 19 of the making oh, X podcast guys <laughs> thank you darkest 49 aka tim for being here with us and being patient with us and letting us uh, reschedule this 15 times we appreciate thanks. it thanks uh, for wanting to talk about like my favorite movie ever. oh my god we loved it it was so fun and by the yeah. way uh when jen wasn't on the pod wow well, last time uh she's the one who chose emperor's new groove too so she said that 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 truck in motion so i think we're gonna have some more more stuff that you just added uh that was an awesome episode we really enjoyed it and uh Mm. guys we will see you next time on the pod make sure wherever you're listening five star reviews comments youtube spotify literally anywhere the show that you listen to podcasts you can listen to our show um and make sure you uh you make this you hit the subscribe button so you never uh, miss any of the new episodes we will see you next time for a new movie which we do not know what it is yet (laughs) 
on the Making in Action podcast. See you next time. Bye-bye.